Hello and welcome to another video. As usual, my name is Jeffrey. This is the Inquisitive Universe. Let's get started on this one. So in this video, I want to compare two SOCs in depth. So this video may take a little bit of a while, but people have you know complained that I, I spend a bit of time on background stuff before moving on to the main video. Um, please um, do not be offended. I apologize. There are timestamps in the description you can use those ones to just simply skip to the part of the video that you want. I am not, I don't have the viewership count yet where these timestamps uh, time stamps automatically appears on the bottom of the video. So please uh, just do me a favor and you can check the description for the timestamps and then skip to the part of the video that you're probably interested in. But you have to also be aware that not everybody knows as much as you do. So many people need a bit of background knowledge before we jump into this one because yeah i used to do that i used to just jump into the video straight away but most people found it hard to get into my videos because it was all just so technical and stuff and you know i i don't want to alienate anyone so i want to make sure that everybody feels welcome to the inquisitive universe because that's why it's inquisitive universe it's a universe of people who are inquisitive about everything so yeah let's talk about the two sources i want to compare these are two entry-level sources that are like super important in the world right now these are the helio g the mediatek helio g85 and the unisoc t606 Now, the MediaTek Helio G85 was actually a lower mid-range SOC when it was released in the year 2020 and it initially found its way onto the Redmi Note 9. It was, it was made with the Helio G80, yeah, the Helio G80, it's basically a faster version of the Helio G80 but it's also uh, both of them are actually like, you know, budgets or lower mid-range SOCs and it made its comeback. It was actually, people had actually forgotten about it, it made its comeback last was it last year or was it earlier this year? I think it's, it's got to be earlier uh, this year, 2023, with the Redmi 12C. And then it's, you know, been a mainstay. It, I think it's, it's come out on a Samsung phone. I think the Samsung, was it the A14 or so, A14 4G? I think I should probably check that. And then also the Redmi 13C, it was reused on the Redmi 13C. So the G85 is actually a very solid one. Yeah, but... Despite the fact that it was actually announced as a mid-range SOC, it's no longer mid-range anymore. It's now basically, it's now budget slash entry level. That's it. So the other one uh, is the Unisoc T606. It's a budget SOC, budget slash entry level as well. So it's actually become popular nowadays. I mean, personally myself, I... I have always rooted for Unisoc and I've always wanted them to come on board. You know, the competition is good for the market because there were like so many shitty low-end SOCs then and I felt that MediaTek would be able to raise the standard and they actually have. And the Unisoc T606 is actually one of these SOCs that I see that I'm actually very happy about because before the T606, what you saw was terrible. Helio A22, trash, right? Helio G25, trash. Unisoc 9863A, trash. Like lots of trash going on at the lower end of the market so it is 606 actually makes me happy and i'm seeing it in a lot of entry-level budget phones these days and you know it's actually very good it, it encourages me so we're going to have these two SOCs go up against each other they are really in the same range now right so let's go on to this one let's talk about the the g85 and the t606 now the very first area that we're going to be checking out is the performance and checking out performance is mostly where you're checking out the GPU and you're checking out the CPU cores. So let's look at the CPU cores first. Now, funny enough, both SOCs have the same identical CPU setup, CPU architecture. You see, they both have uh, two Cortex A75 CPUs and six Cortex A55 like CPUs. So the A75 CPUs, this is we call this a big little setup, big little big cores and little cores the big cores handle the heavy tasks the gaming you know any like serious resource cpu resource tasking app that you want to do they are usually handled by the big cores the little cores on the other hand are there for the light tasks you know scrolling through your phone watching a movie making a call now this separation is needed because the big cores consume a lot of battery and if you have only big cores running most of the time these and you see people post all day battery life and then when they game they get around eight hours of battery life or seven hours of battery life if you have only those big cores running those a75 cores running 
you probably get less. You probably won't get half. Half a day if you are not gaming on your phone, then maybe probably four hours of use if you were gaming or even less. So that's why the little calls are there so that when you're not gaming, the little calls take over because they are weak. They don't use a lot of battery. They will save your battery and that's how you get that all day battery life that you usually like to brag about. So these two SOC, since they are very, very similar, the only way to differentiate them right now is clock speed because both of them are both 12 nanometers made by TSMC. So the only way to separate them right now is clock speed. And as you can see, the Helio G85 is faster than the, the T606. It's, it runs at two gigahertz of maximum speed compared to the 1.6 gigahertz on the T606. So it's going to perform better. However, slightly, it's going to perform better than the T606. Now let us check this now by let us confirm this now by checking benchmarks. And one of the, the most foremost benchmarks for, for SOCs around is the Antutu 10. It was Antutu 8 before they went to 9, now it's 10. Now if you check the Antutu 10 benchmark, you can see very clearly that the Helio G85 scores 267,399 points compared to the 242,090 points of the T606. So you can see that they're, they're both somewhat in the same range right in terms of performance but you see that little boost from the cpus that little boost on the cpus actually like took the g85 a little bit higher than what you get on the t606 um, because i've seen people argue especially those marketers in quote from our favorite company that the t606 is better than g85 like are you kidding me something wrong with you people so there so we can now say that since like both of them are actually very close in terms of performance, the Helio G85 is you know, just ahead, like slightly just ahead. Then you move on and then you talk about the GPUs, of course. Now, the G85 uses the older Mali G52 MC2, which is actually more powerful than the Mali G57 MP1 on the T606. Now the GPU is mostly used for, it's used in part for video rendering, but it's also used in a lot of the time for gaming and handling other graphical tasks and applications. So the strength of the GPU on your smartphone will, will, will determine the type of, the quality of videos you'll be able to watch, the quality of apps you'll be able to run, the quality of games you'll be able to play. The GPU plays a very crucial part in all this. And since the G85 has the better GPU here, it's going to do better than the T606 when it comes to games. Now, if we are going to go and check benchmarks for that, I have two benchmarks here, 3D Mark and Compute Score. On 3D Mark, the Helio G85 scores 725 points compared to the 420 on the T606. While on Compute Score benchmark, the G85 completely destroys the T606, scoring 1,138 points compared to the 441 from the T606. So you can see now that the G85 has a slight advantage in terms of CPU performance and then an even better advantage in terms of GPU. So that one is for both of them. Now, there's a part I've not even talked about. One of my previous videos, I talked about SOC optimization where companies optimize games to run better on some SOCs. Now, when it comes to optimization for apps and games, if you were to put MediaTek and Minisoc together, MediaTek, despite not being very optimized, enjoys a lot more optimization compared to, to Unisoc. So, like I said in the video, these things are nuanced, so you may not really see it on the spec sheet, but when you handle both devices, you will feel it. And companies can also make do with software to like, you know, help these things perform better. But that one is an aside, I'm just mentioning so that you keep that in mind. So the next thing we want to look at is the memory, that's the RAM, the, the CPU RAM. So on here, both devices, uh, both SOCs, I beg your pardon, they both support LPDDR4X RAM. But the RAM on the G85 is faster because it runs at 1800 MHz compared to the one on the T606 that runs on 1600 MHz. So the G85 has the faster RAM and you move on. So the next thing we want to talk about is the storage. Now this is one area where the T606 is actually better. It supports UFS storage compared to the G85 that is stuck at EMMC 5.1. Now this is a virtue of their age. The G85 is a 20, 2020 whereas the T606 is a 2021 SOC. So obviously in the tech world, a lot can happen within a year. UFS became cheaper within that time period and therefore 
yeah, the, the added support for UFS. So uh, the T606 supports up to UFS 2.2, the Helio J5 is stuck at EMMC 5.1. Now the speed of the storage can also play a part in how fast the SOC is going to perform. So you keep that in mind. Then you move on and then you talk about the ISP, the image signal processor. I've done a video about this one too. You may want to check this one out. The ISP, the AI on board, which is something I'm working on with uh, my guy, Craig. Shout out, Craig. And uh, finally, the uh, camera sensor on board. So MediaTek and Unisoc, both of them have like, their ISPs at this level are basically low level. Not very impressive, just good enough. But one thing that many people do not know at this level is that, especially for smartphone photography, a lot of smartphone photography relies on computing and AI. Especially if you've got, if there's an AI unit, AI hardware on board, it's going to help accelerate the AI software because most camera software nowadays is AI. So if you have an AI unit on board, an NPU on board to accelerate this AI software task, it's going to make the camera performance a lot better than it's actually supposed to be. So you can see here that the, Media, the MediaTek Helio JT5 has the MediaTek APU plus the NeuroPilot software in addition with the ISP. So the Unisec, the Unisoc T606 doesn't have a hardware accelerator on board, a hardware NP on board. It's got some AI software on board for the cameras, but there is no NP on board to accelerate it. So obviously we're going to take this one and we're going to give it to the G85 for photography. Yeah, and to, 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 to even sweeten the deal on the part of the Helio G85, the G85 supports up to 48 megapixel sensors. So which means that you can pack in a lot more sensors in there to be able to capture more. The T606 on the other hand, maxes out at 24 megapixels. The, both of them are tied for video. Both of them record and playback video of 1080p at 60 fps. PS. And then I'll finally take us to the last part, which is network connectivity, which both of them are also tied. And they both use LTE cat se category 7, and they support Bluetooth 5, and they also support Wi-Fi 5. So for this one, for having the slightly better CPU cores, the better GPU, and the faster RAM with, you know, the slightly better photography and videography options, there is absolutely no question here that the G85 is the better SOC when compared to the Unisoc T606, right? That's just it. The only disadvantage it has is that it has a, a weaker uh, support for storage. So it's going to have to deal with EMMC 5.1 storage, whilst the T606 can get a UFS 2.2 storage, which can actually help speed up its own performance. So which is why you see that the gap between the both of them isn't really all that far. That happens, yeah. So with that, we've come to the end of this video. If you want to see more comparisons like this in depth, please let me know. You should also know that a lot of this um, performance of these SOCs now, if we move away from their theoretical performance, is also dependent on the software on board. Now, this is one problem that a lot of people have with MIUI, myself included. MIUI tends to be very heavy, and if you don't have a lot of RAM, and a very strong CPU core on the SOC to run it, it then kind of like bogs the CPU down. The CPU normally would perform at this level, the software will just bring it down somewhat. That's why a lot of people tend to go cost the custom room route and then they'll tell you, ah, ever since I used custom room that was light, like my CPU is up here and it's performing the way it's supposed to perform. But that one is an aside, I, I don't really want to come tell anyone to go and do custom room stuff because it's risky and I don't want to be responsible for breaking anybody's phones. Personally myself, I don't do custom rooms and I will not go out there and tell people to do it. My name is Jeffrey. Thank you for coming and I'll see you in the next one. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. Like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much.